morning guys this is the first video recording for cost and management accounting and in this first video i'm going to look at doing a, a break-even analysis it is the first question that you will normally find in assignment one so let me quickly just show you what i have here this is cost and management accounting sample assignment one question one break-even analysis and this is exactly how the question will present itself either in an assignment, a test or an exam. So you are given information and then you are required to do certain things. Now what I have done is I have gone and I have put all of this information for us in a Excel spreadsheet exactly as it was there. That's the given information for opportunity one and opportunity two and then the requirements here. So let's have a look at it. If we look at opportunity one, we see that it is based on 4,000 units being produced. For opportunity two, it is based on 40,000 units being produced. And you must be aware of that because this will influence all your calculations. The sales for both opportunities are the same. The cost of sales for both opportunities are the same so needless to say the net profit will be the same for both but the detail with regard to the different cost components that you have there in the pink that is completely different so let's have a look at the first requirement here Re complete the cost analysis as it appears in your answer book now in your answer book that cost analysis will look something like this okay just the top part here. They will give you the opportunity. They ask you to indicate the variable cost, the variable cost per unit, as well as the fixed cost. Now, this is important thing to remember here, and that is that when we do these analysis, a specific cost component can either be variable or fixed. It can never be both. If it is variable, then we will be able to calculate the variable cost per unit. If it is fixed, we're just going to leave it as is. Now, OK, all this information was given. So it is not like you have to wonder about it. Direct materials. It was given for opportunity one, 150,000. So we can simply put it in. OK, direct labor was given. 157,000, simply put it in. Sales commission was given, okay? It's 35,000, simply put it in. Now, a key here, if you see the word direct, it is a dead giveaway that we are indeed working with a variable cost because if we are not gonna make anything, it's not gonna cost us anything. Um, we won't have to pay people, we won't have to use material, but the key is in the word direct. The same here with sales commission. The guys who work at commission are only going to get that commission if they in fact sell something. If nothing is sold, then there will be no commission. Now, it could sometimes happen that a salesperson works for a, a salary plus commission, but then that salary will be part of the fixed administrative cost. Okay. So now that we have the totals in there, then we've just copied it from what was given, we can calculate the variable cost per unit. Okay. Now remember what I said to you already, was that in this case, the entire thing is based on producing 4,000 units. So how do I calculate the variable cost per unit? I take the total that I've just filled in there and I divide it by the 4,000 and I get an amount there of 37 Rand 50. Okay, next thing I must do is I must find the variable cost per unit for direct labor. And uh, once again, I divide it by 4,000 units and I get 39 Rand 38. Same with the sales commission. I take the 35,000 that was given. I divide it by the 4,000 and I get to 8 Rand 75. Only thing that we now need to do for opportunity one is record the fixed cost exactly as it was given. The fixed manufacturing overheads, 115, let's put it in. The 
fixed administrative cost 200,000. Let's put it in. OK, and in the moment we've done that, what we now need to do is we now need to total these columns. So let's total them. OK, now we can start to calculate the break even point in units. That's the second thing we are asked to do there. See, calculate the break even points in units for both opportunities. I'm going to do everything for opportunity one first, and only then am I going to look at opportunity two. OK, so now there is a formula for calculating the break even point in units, and this is the formula you take the. Total fixed cost, we have the total fixed cost and we must divide it by the by the marginal income per unit. Now I'm reminding you that marginal income and gross profit is exactly the same thing. So we have to divide it by the marginal income or the gross profit then per unit, but we do not have the gross profit or the marginal income per unit yet. To get that, we must get the sales price per unit and we must subtract the variable cost per unit. Now, variable cost per unit is not a problem. We've just calculated it there as 85 and 63, but we don't have the sales price per unit yet. OK, so that is the first thing we must calculate. And how do we calculate that? Well, we are given our total sales. I'm just going to go up there to show you again. Total sales is 750,000. And we are given the number of units. So it's quite easy. We simply take the 750,000. Of course, scroll too far down there. And we divide that by the 4,000. And then we get our sales price per unit. And our sales price per unit is 187 Rand 50. OK, now that we have that, we can calculate our marginal income by subtracting the 85 Rand 63. And then we get 101 Rand and 80 cents. And now we have that and we can do now take our total fixed cost that we got there, the 315. We divide it by the 101.88 that we've just calculated there. And we get an amount. And the number of units that we have to manufacture for opportunity one before we make a profit is 3092.02454. Now we cannot make part of a unit. What are we going to do with it? OK, so in truth, we always have to round up the number of units in the real world. So the number of units that we have to manufacture before we start making a profit is 3093 units. OK. Now, when we go and we calculate the break even point in revenue or in sales, we are going to take the sales price per unit that we uh, calculated before, the 187, and we simply manufacture it by the number of units that we are going to, to sell. But in this case, we are going to go back to the unrounded figure. So I take that unrounded figure, I multiply it with the sales price in units, and I get an amount there, and the amount is almost 580,000. So if I get to 580,000 rands worth of sales, I know that I indeed made a profit. OK, in this case, our sales was considerably more, so it's been a good month. We can do exactly the same here for opportunity two. I'm not going to do that again. I've already showed you how to work that out. And now we follow the exact same principle again. We calculate the sales price per unit. But now remember, although the sales is exactly the same, 750,000, for opportunity two, if I go up here and show you, remember it is not based on 4,000 units, but on 40 thousand units that's why we expect this variable cost per unit to be much lower and indeed it was much lower 
it was two rand 63, two rand 63 for the direct material and direct labor respectively, and only one rand 75 for the commission. So in this case, our total variable cost really is uh, um, only seven rand. Okay, so we take the 750,000 now, we divide it by 40,000 and we get 18 rand 75. That will enable us to calculate the marginal income because we are simply going to subtract the seven rand. We already have our total fixed cost at 377,500. We can now divide it by, by that 1175. And then we get an answer there of 32,127 units. Once again, we have to round that up because it's impossible to manufacture 0.67 of a unit. Okay, and so we see that we have to manufacture 29,000 units, 29,362 units to be exact, before we start making a profit. Now we can calculate the break even point in sales by saying, okay, what is our sales price per unit? Well, it was 18 Rand 75, and we are now going to multiply it by the unrounded uh, units, break even units because we want to get a uh, correct amount. When we do that, we get to 602.393, but there's a but, there's something that I forgot. Look here, it says that we must calculate this or round it to the nearest rand, and I haven't done that yet. Okay. So if I am going to round it to the nearest rand, this will become yeah, sorry, it will become 579 rand, 755 rand. In the case of opportunity two, it will become 602,000 394 rand and that is what we need to fill into our answer sheet let's go and have a look did we complete the cost analysis yes did we calculate the break-even point in units for both opportunities yes did we calculate the break-even point in sales for both opportunities yes so now we can say okay we've done all of that uh, let me minimize here let me minimize the Word document. And really, guys, that is how you do a break-even analysis. So I'm going to stop the recording. And uh, then looking forward to seeing you for the next lesson. Goodbye.